From the murky waters of the sportsman's paradise, stories emerge. Stories of the generations of people who have shared in the bounties of the land. Stories of communities that have persevered through natural disasters. Stories of the abundance of fish, wildlife, and adventures that create an ecosystem rich in diversity. And from the silted banks of the mighty Mississippi to the soggy marsh bottoms, from the tops of towering pine forests to the depths of the salty gulf, human and animal have shared this fortune for centuries. Enjoy these stories as told by outdoor journalists who travel across our state documenting the adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage that make us Bayou Wild. Welcome to Bayou Wild. We're here at our home base of Morton Seafood Restaurant. Don Dubuque, Martha Spencer. Has a year gone by already? It's getting close. Not quite, but it's getting there. Well, what a beautiful day here, too, huh? Beautiful day, heading to Christmas. You know, a lot to look back on this year as we covered so many different stories. And we're still filming. We're going to have a lot of new things coming up for next year. But we're going to take a look back the next two weeks at some of our favorite episodes. Some of the things that we really had stand out in our minds. New to you, new to me great recipes, all of that coming up in Martha's Favorite Segments on Bayou Island. Closed captioning made possible by CETO.com. Become a member. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right. Boiled to perfection. Enriched with tradition. A taste that's savory, Crispy and a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. If you're lucky enough to bag a deer or a hog this season, bring it here to Double D. Double D processes hogs and exotic game and guarantees your product is always the meat you brought to Double D. Double D Meats in Bogalusa, home of country smoked, spicy jalapeno cheddar, and other customized flavors. Bring your deer or your hog here to Double D where you always get your meat back in return. It's worth a drive to Bogalusa from anywhere. Double D. Welcome back to Bayou Wild TV. We're looking at the year in review, and Martha, I know one of the things that was very fascinating to you was squirrel hunting. You told us <laughs> that you never thought you'd see yourself walking around a swamp with a bunch of old men. So, squirrels to me back home are the size of house cats, and they're very tame. Here, they're not. They're very uh, hard to reach. They're all over the place, but I never thought of actually going to trek through the woods to hunt them. We did have a little behind the scenes hilarity that day when our producer went into a six foot mud puddle, but uh, unfortunately we didn't catch that on camera. We did catch some other great moments. Here they are, squirrel hunting in Luli. Go around the back side. On that tree right there. That, that one. Ooh. Ooh. Dog spotted. This should be something that I wouldn't sleep at night the night before. I'd go like crazy, like duck hunting, you know? Like, but we got away from it, you know, you don't have that much woods around anymore that you can hunt, you know, just the same old story with everyone, but it's still, it's still fun to do, you know, it's, we're going to do it more next year, I promise you that. <laughs> Coming, you know, you don't get those special moments like, like a, a pretty flock of ducks or nothing, but, you know, if you get two or three squirrels like we did on a few trees today and, and just being around the dogs. It's a camaraderie, really. I mean, to go out here and, and it's like falling back in time. Oh, right, right, right in the squirrel. Right in the sledge. Right in the sledge. Right in the sledge. I like making a squirrel sauce because nothing tastes like a squirrel but a squirrel. 
And it's like duck, you know, duck is duck, a squirrel is squirrel, rabbit, you know, you might say it tastes a little bit like frog or chicken or whatever, but squirrel's unique and it's, it's a good thing. I like a really good sauce pecan with tomatoes and mushrooms. Oh. One feature that was not quite Chris Lecoq's favorite, because he spent 20 hours on a boat with you, not because it was you on the 20 boat. 20 hours on a boat for anybody is tough. <laughs> what was that all about? So we went offshore on my other job, uh, deck handing for Southern Catch Outfitters, and we caught a historic fish for us. Our best fish of the year turned out to be a 300-pound swordfish. Well, little did we know we would be on the boat until 11.30 that evening. It was an epic fight, an epic battle with some great folks from Texas. Let's take a look at going back to May and catching a jumbo swordfish. The main quality a fisherman needs to have when dropping for swordfish is patience. Sometimes it might just load up real heavy and stay loaded. Other times it'll go completely slack. Just anything different is what we're looking for. For the inexperienced, it's easy to miss the subtle bite of a swordfish. And what about the hook set? Well, that's nothing more than a few quick cranks on the reel. But that may be the easy part. Got him. The battle of pulling a fish up from 1,300 feet of water is what makes this type of fishing such a challenge. Interesting update for the 5 o'clock hour. Literally four hours ago, we had the leader, which is 75 foot long, at the rod tip. Five hours later, we are back to it. We're going to keep you updated, but it's looking like we're getting closer by the hour. Not the hour. Everyone gets in a stretch or two, the gaffs and harpoon are in hand, and the exhausted angler is ready for the fish to hit the deck. Reeling at one fish for five hours never crossed my mind. It's just like reeling up a suburban. It's ridiculous. I'm bored. A trip offshore in the Gulf of Mexico is always a one of a kind experience and one that can always live up to a challenge for any avid fisherman. For this Texas group, catching a monster swordfish is no longer a myth. They left Venice with a lot of meat, wet, dirty and tired, but with a fishing story that they will tell for the rest of their lives. It's actually supposed to be a tuna trip, but the tuna were not cooperating, so you always have to have a plan B. Yes. We actually hooked that swordfish at 4.30 in the afternoon. Five hours later, as you saw in the video, we finally landed it. And unfortunately, the only downfall was we had to explicitly state that it was a daytime swordfish because swordfish at night, they, you fish totally different for them. So this was a daytime swordfish on a hand crank reel, and that was pretty impressive for one angler who fought the fish the entire time. It certainly was a memorable trip. Absolutely. And, of course, quail hunting. Oh, wow. What, that's one of my favorites, too. Let's just say I had some growing to do. <laughs> We're going to take a look back at my first trip quail hunting with my high school friend Lainey. The good news is I did get better in the past few months, but here's the first little bit of hilarity out with Lainey, Elsie, we also had Don, and who else did we have? Gracie. Gracie and, and Millie. Millie was yeah. there, too. Yeah, quail hunting. Yep. Where is it? Oh, there. This sport is hard. Physically, it's not very hard, but it's very hard to hit the birds. They're so small, they're like the size of a dinner roll and they're going crazy and they're flying away and I almost stepped on one. Dogs found the birds great. You really couldn't do it without them. And I wish I had half the stamina they did. It's instinct and it's, it's really fun to watch them do what, what they were meant to do and it just comes so easy. 
Shoot it! Luckiest bird in the world. It's not too physically intense, which is good. Um, you can come up and do it in a half day. The dogs are happy, they sleep good, and uh, I can see why a lot of people get into it. Good girl, good girl. I think this is a great introductory sport to hunting. Uh, it's not that intimidating in the sense that they're not large animals, you're not feeling threatened at all. Um, it's a very social sport. You can talk. I mean, we're wearing orange so we can see each other, but the birds, you know, they're not like deer or hogs or anything. They, they hide really well, and you don't have to be quiet, so people like myself, that's the good thing. And it's just, it's kind of fun. It's like a scavenger hunt. Good girl. Drop. Good girl. For people who have never done it before, Get a bird dog and the passion comes from that. That's the best part. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get deliveries seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. If you hunt or fish, you really need to check out 20echo.com. It's an app that you can take on the water or on the hunt. It logs all the information. It's got the date, the GPS location, tons of information to log your catch or kill. It's a great thing to have. Check it out at 20echo.com and you'll see it more on Bayou Wild TV. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use what the pros use. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil? Because, guys, it has more herbs and spices. It has a much better flavor. It's easy, just pour and boil. Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Find the yellow bag, and pour and boil for great crawfish every time. Welcome back to Bayou Wild, and I want to remind you this is our year in review program. And by the way, we want you to tell us what your favorite feature, your favorite moment was as you watch Bayou Wild TV. One of the popular features we have is called the Captain's Wife. Right. And we went on a trip with Kristen Moran, and that was one of our favorites. Yours, I know. Yeah, she is phenomenal. She is a mom, she's a businesswoman, and she is a cold blooded deer killer. She is a great hunter. She's the wife of Captain Chris Moran of Moran's Marina in Port Fouchon. Let's take a look back at her segment in The Captain's Wife. A fishing rodeo at a marina seems like an unlikely place for two people to meet and develop a relationship. But that's exactly how it happened for Kristen Fagan and Captain Chris Moran. Apparently that's what kept his attention was seeing the hunting pictures and stuff on Facebook and I guess he just thought it was, oh, it's cute, I kill every now and then. And he came, I think it was the Super Bowl or something, 2012, and he walked in my parents' house and he just saw, I guess you can say, the dead animals everywhere. Like, we just, it's what we do as a family. And he realized the extent of how much we hunt. And then I started telling stories, he started asking questions, and I started telling stories and he asked a little bit more and I said it. I've been hunting by myself since eight, and he's like, oh, like, you seriously hunt? Yes, I seriously hunt. There's a high probability he broke it off, like, recently when he was growing, because it does, you don't even have a spike on the other side, like, it's clean cut, going, or he can have a hormone deficiency where he's just not ever going to grow. Tell me what your parents used to do, because you're such a killer. <laughs> I get three bullets. That would be if I shot early, and something really monster came out later on. I still had one, and because I was scared of the dark, so I would never leave this day without a bullet in my gun. So that means I couldn't come home with more than two deer. So that was like a safety thing. They had to figure out a way to control. I'd be in a stand for 30 minutes and shoot. And then something else with bigger would walk out, I didn't want to shoot. And then something else with bigger would walk out, I didn't want to shoot. So they figured that three bullets was a good, a good number. That way, if I shot early and something really nice came out later or bigger, I had one more bullet, and then you knew I wasn't leaving without my third in the gun. So that's kind of how they put me on a, on a leash, I guess. You know, one of our favorite features, too, of course, is Alaska yes. Cajun Invasion. It was your first year <laughs> going there, and uh, kind of had an introduction to a, 
Pretty unique trip, a flyout and a pilot yeah. who probably wasn't as considered as he should have been. I'm a little uneasy in small planes, but this captain took us on bobs and weaves and rolls near the glaciers, which was beautiful, a little unnerving, but all worth it when we saw the fish that we caught in Alaska, those silver salmon. You got to keep the bite going. You got to keep bait in the water. It's similar to when the snapper are coming up. You got to keep the chum going. And the fish are hot right now, so we're going to keep putting the lines back in. We'll film the show later. Hey, they finally let me catch one. You sure that's not a king round? Look at that, man. Fishing in this tranquil setting is one of the best ways to experience Alaska's outdoors. So far, this is hands down my favorite excursion of the trip. Not only because we got to take a seaplane out and see all kinds of nature, I mean the peacefulness, you have no cell service out here, and you really just feel like you have the whole area to yourself. Best piece of popcorn in a movie any day. Fresh salmon and a bear. <laughs> From a distance, Alaska's beauty is nothing short of memorable. But a gone fishing lodge excursion doesn't limit Alaska to a distance. And if the sights of a feeding bear weren't breathtaking enough, zooming just a few hundred feet by a centuries-old glacier reveals that there's always something a little more amazing right around the corner. really is beautiful and I know I'm probably in the minority of people that have a tough time on small planes but um, this lake on top of a glacier is just breathtaking I mean it's it's hard to put into words and I would try to use every ounce of my battery in my phone to, to take pictures but I don't think any of them are gonna really do it justice so if you do ever do get a chance to come up here <laughs> definitely take a seaplane ride I'm still kind of processing and I'm still trying to get my stomach back <laughs> but it was pretty amazing we actually covered five episodes of Bayou Wild in Alaska. You can see all of those on our YouTube page. Just check out the Cajun Invasion to Alaska if you'd like to see more. So we get up pretty early for shoots. We do. Three to four o'clock, not, not unheard of. But one shoot, we had to get up pretty much nighttime. It wasn't early morning, it was still nighttime. And that was to go shrimping out on the Peruga. I love that trip. Yep, Captain George Barisic, and uh, that was one of your favorites. It was. It was a great experience. It rained almost the entire day, but we still had a great time and came home with some tasty shrimp. So. Let's go back and relive it. Yes. On the letter rip. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Let's get to work. There you go. Having gotten stung by catfish before, uh, sorting definitely made me careful. I wanted to use the rake a little bit more than my hands because of course you still get those catfish in there and they'll stick you really good. So sorting was cool. You see all kinds of bait, anything from pogies to uh, corn bellies to eels to catfish, flounder, baby flounder, even a couple baby pompanos were in there. We didn't see too many crabs though, but there's certainly a lot of bycatch. I used to pride myself on fish identification, but this is one I've never seen before. You can't help but fantasize over all the different possibilities in the kitchen while you sort hundreds of pounds of shrimp. Well, you see, you got fried shrimp, blackened shrimp, stewed shrimp, boiled shrimp, shrimp po' boys, shrimp stew, shrimp gumbo, Cajun shrimp. We got stuffed shrimp. It, it's pretty, gumbo it's pretty shrimp. much the fruit of the sea. <laughs> it doesn't get any fresher than a piping hot pot of Croatian shrimp stew prepared by Captain George with the shrimp that were swimming just minutes before. Preparation is simple. Saute onions, bell pepper, and mushrooms, brown some sausage, and peel a pound or two of your freshly harvested shrimp. I peeled, you know, pretty fresh day of, but not hours, you know, two hours out the water, if that. While a hearty meal simmers, the shrimper's work on deck continues. Uh, it's pretty relaxing. You can kind of get lost in your thoughts while doing it. I'm um, sure, you know, they turn music on and cut loose too, but uh, I enjoyed it. It wasn't rough. We didn't have to worry about any rocky waves or anything. And uh, even though we did get soaking wet, you got all your amenities inside. 
In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right. Boiled to perfection. And rich with tradition. A taste that's savory, crispy, and a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. Find out if alternative treatment is the answer to your pet's health issues. Contact Dr. G at VetNaturally.com. Welcome back to Bayou Wild TV. We're previewing our year one in review. And Martha, you know, one of the responses we get from a lot of our viewers, their favorite, is our cooking segments. Cooking, you know, pretty much invites everybody to learn something. And we cook a lot of wild game. Of course, Chef John Fultz is pretty much the authority in fish and wild game. And We've killed a, quite a few deer this year, and backstrap, of course, is the prime rib of a deer. But have you ever marinated it in scotch? Mm. Well, we did with John Fulce, and I did several times afterward, scotch marinated venison backstrap. A little granulated garlic, and of course, a little pepper, and that scotch is gonna just kind of let it. And a lot sit. of the seasoning cooks off of it, so if it looks like too much, it's really not. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, you know, most of the cooks know, especially in liquors. Anytime you put heat to alcohol, it's going to cook off. Right. So you don't have to worry about the, the alcohol becomes to marinate, and that's what it's doing. So I would let this sit, obviously, covered with a little clear wrap for about four or five hours, or you can do it the night before if you mm -hmm. want to in the refrigerator. Now you can see what I have here, right? Some it's a wood. nice hot skillet, and that's important because when, when you put liquid, or, or like in this particular case, scotch, uh, the meat is wet. So you want to go into a hot skillet. You wouldn't put this in an oven. It would just kind of sit there and just kind of be, be white in the skillet, right? So now I want that very high heat to kind of get that seared nicely on Keeps one side. Keeps the flavors inside of it. Well, it, it sears it in. Mm -hmm. And of course, that scotch is now cooking off right into the steam. Getting a contact buzz uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you are. Now I'll add just a little bit. We took the bones of the deer. Now, of course, you can use a beef stock. You make your own broth? Absolutely. So we just take the uh, the bones, the leg bones of the of the deer, and we roast them off and get them nice and brown. And we create this really nice brown stock. Take a look at how, how pretty that stock if is. If your right mouth there. is not watering right now, something <laughs> might be wrong with you. So now th this is all done, and uh, we would let this reduce. I'd season it just for a little uh, pinch of salt, and that, that scotch is all cooked out. And, of course, you... Uh, Put your finger in there and taste that, huh? And folks, uh, if they don't like it medium rare, you suggest it to be medium rare, uh, but they yeah, can cook it more yeah, if they yeah, like. Yeah, 135, but y'all, if you want to cook it to, uh, to, to 145, more well done. A lot of people hadn't gotten to the point where on game that they want to eat it right. a little bit rare. That's fine. The, the, the rarer you cook it, obviously, the better it's going to be. Okay? And does any of the alcohol that's cooked in it take some of the gaminess out as well? Well, it's certainly on tenderloin. You, when we talk about tenderloin, it's the best piece of meat on any animal, right? right? So it's going to, because of its tenderness in the process that we did a little while ago, the marinating, and then, of course, the roasting, all of those flavors are going to permeate that meat. And then, of course, with my finished little sauce right here, I'm going to put on it. I'm going to just kind of drizzle a little bit across the top of it. It's going to continue to add heat to that meat. Take a look at it. All right. Mm -hmm. We are finished with this beautiful venison. I am so hungry. Ready to <laughs> eat this, and we'll uh, be right back. Beautiful. Beautiful. Came out really nice. You know, one of the things we like to do here on Bayou Wild TV is whatever we catch or kill, we also like to show you how to cook and eat too. So these quail were actually brought from one of our hunts 
to Chef Austin Fauché of Cava, herb encrusted quail. It was so fresh, the herbs were just amazing. And if you go on a quail hunt, it's not really that hard to make. So we're gonna take you over to Cava for herb encrusted quail. Since you have all this marinade, Creole mustard, buttermilk sticking onto it already, that's your wet. Right, so you just press right into your breadcrumbs. What kind of oil are we using? This is just regular um, soybean oil. Okay. I like to use soybean oil because we grow a lot of soybeans here in Louisiana, so I like to be an advocate of that. <laughs> right, so now we're just pressing these breadcrumbs on the quail. You want to make sure that you press very tightly. You're also going to flatten the quail a little bit. And now we're just placing these into hot vegetable oil to fry. I imagine it doesn't take too long to fry, being that it's kind of a smaller piece of meat. Exactly, and that helps us, keeps our herbs nice, bright, and green, too. How Let's you know? plate this up and give it a try. It looks delicious. All right, so we have some just little light mixed greens here. Just gonna place those right around the mixed greens. And here we have some traditional New Orleans remoulade sauce. And Would we're just you serve this as an appetizer up. or as a full entree? Absolutely, I'd serve this just as an appetizer. Awesome. For a full entree, we'd have to put a vegetable and a starch and all that on there. So we're just gonna do a little drizzle of remoulade sauce right over the top. <laughs> I'm starving, this looks delicious. Right, and there we have our right. herb crusted breast right. of quail. the true test. It's very tender and it's very hot. I'll be taking this down. You guys have a good day. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get deliveries seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right. Boiled to perfection. And rich with tradition. A taste that's savory, crispy, and a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. all these recipes and all these episodes in their entirety on YouTube. The great thing about it is anytime, anywhere, you can just log on from any part of the world and catch up on episodes you may not have seen. We also have a contest going on. Tell folks about that. Well, that's right. If you send us in, either share our, our shows with your, your friends on Facebook or just tell us what was your favorite feature or favorite moment in watching Bayou Wild TV. We've got a great prize package for you. Go on our Facebook page and you'll see what it's all about. Coming up next week, we talk about all my favorites. We're going to talk about some of Don's favorite episodes in our look back at a first year of Bayou Wild TV.